Hello everyone. So today I'm going to talk about headache. Uh, so as I've told you before, you need to know the differentials for each type of symptom uh, by heart so that you are absolutely efficient in history taking and you can rule out all the dangerous conditions, all the red flags, and also provide safety netting about the red flags and um, you know provide uh, a good management and to carry out your cons consultation very smoothly. Okay. So now with headache, we have a lot of differentials. So let's just classify them into acute and chronic, okay? So acute will be a person presenting to you with a headache that has a history of a few hours duration or maybe started in the, uh, you know, um, within the same 24 hours, okay? Uh, whereas chronic headache will be something that the patient says that uh, he has been suffering from this headache for the last two to three weeks uh, or maybe months. Um, the patient may say that they have been having this headache uh, for a long time, but it has worsened now, okay? And acute headache is um, consistent, it's constant, and chronic headache will be something that comes and goes, all right? So now let's talk about the differentials of acute headache first, and then we will discuss about the chronic headache differentials. Okay, so... In terms of acute headache, the conditions that can present are subarachnoid hemorrhage, meningitis and encephalitis, giant cell arthritis, trauma, and hangover headache. Okay, so uh, the first four are absolutely dangerous conditions. Okay, these conditions are those all these patients you need to admit and uh, you need to provide immediate management. Okay. So uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage, as you are all well aware that it's a very severe type of headache. The patient tells you that it's the worst headache of their life, okay? The worst headache of their life. Or they might say that it feels like a thunderclap, okay? It starts all of a sudden, okay? So it is sudden in onset. It's all over the head, but especially over the back of the head, okay? And um, in terms of character, uh, the patient will say that it's quite a sharp pain. They may say that it's like a thunderclap, okay? And radiation, it radiates to the neck. The patient will say that my neck also hurts and my neck is stiff and it's radiating to the neck, okay? And what makes it better, what makes it worse? There is not absolutely nothing that makes it better or worse. And it's a severe, constant type of pain, okay? And when you ask about the, uh, severity, of the severity of the pain, they will say that it's like 10 out of 10. Okay, so that's subarachnoid hemorrhage. Then, um, also in subarachnoid hemorrhage, the patient will have a history of hypertension. Uh, the patient might have a history of um, kidney disease because, you know, um, there's one type of kidney disease, which is called as adult polycystic kidney disease, in which there is association of subarachnoid hemorrhage. These patients might also have a family history of headache, um, a family history of subarachnoid hemorrhage, okay? Then meningitis and encephalitis. So as you all know that meningitis and encephalitis is a form of infection. These patients along with the headache, there is also fever and there might also be rash, okay? And the patient might be confused as well. And uh, in terms of the onset, onset is also sudden uh, along with the fever and the site, site is almost all over their head. These this pain also radiates to the neck. Neck stiffness is also here in this type of um in this type of headache. And uh, there's nothing that makes it better or worse. And it's also quite severe, maybe seven or eight out of ten. Okay. And in meningitis, along with um along with all the other uh, symptoms, fever and rage, they also have photophobia. So they say that they tell you that I shy away from light. Uh, or the light is bothering me and high um, high volume sounds or noise also is also bothering them okay then giant cell arthritis so giant cell arthritis the patient is typically old more than 60 years of age and uh, the patient tells you that they have this headache and um, there may also be some history of joint pain but this headache is mostly on the temporal side so the site is on the over the temple mostly Okay, onset is sudden and character, character regarding character, they tell you that it's a throbbing type of pain, pulsating type of pain, okay? And um, it's not radiating anywhere, but this says that it is exacerbated with chewing and combing here. Okay, so 
it worsens with chewing and combing here. It's also quite severe, maybe seven, eight, or nine out of ten. All right. And then along with the um pain on chewing and pain on combing here, there's also a history of um joint pains. And there can and there can also be a complaint of blurring of vision. And this is the absolute red flag, the blurring of vision, because when there is blurring of vision in patients with joints and arthritis, we need to immediately refer them to um, ophthalmologist to be, and start them on IV steroid injection even before taking biopsy. All right, then trauma. So we all know that head trauma, it's a quite a dangerous condition. And uh, in, in head trauma, obviously everything else will be negative, but there will be history of trauma. And for this patient, we need to do CT scan. So trauma is also a red flag that you need to ask in acute headache. And then there is something called as hangover headache. So in hangover headache, usually a young patient, he will present to you in the morning time and he will say, he say that uh, I've been having this severe headache and it's all over my head and it's throbbing type of headache. Um, when you prop, uh, when you ask about other differentials like neck stiffness, pain and chewing, pain and combing, any trauma, everything else will be negative, but the patient will give you a history of taking a lot of alcohol uh, last night, okay? So for these uh, type of patients, the hangover headache type of patient, you need to take a little bit of history about their alcoholism as well. Um, that we will discuss in detail. There is a particular history that we need to ask um, patients who seem to be alcohol addict or seem to have some problem with alcohol consumption, you need also need to count the units of alcohol that this patient has been consuming. So you can see, uh, you can watch my video on um, how to calculate alcohol units. It's there on the, it's there on my YouTube, YouTube channel. You can search for it. Okay. Then differentials about chronic headache. So in chronic headache, we have three types of um, what we call as syndromes, which is migraine, tension headache, and cluster headache. And one is carbon monoxide. The fourth one is carbon monoxide poisoning as well. So migraine, uh, so migraine, tension headache, and cluster headache, all these headaches, they have, um, you know, they've been there for maybe two to three years or something like that, maybe a history of two to three months. And they tell you that um, with migraine, the patient is mostly a female. Cluster headache, the patient is mostly a male. Tension headache can be both male and female. Okay. And migraine, the headache is usually on one side of the head. It's a throbbing pain. Um, severity can be seven to eight. Okay. Um, there are particular triggers. The patient tell you that there are particular triggering factor that makes it worse. For example, stress. For example, the patient has started a new job that has made it worse. And for example, um, uh, you know, skipping meals, a disturbed sleep, okay, stress. Because starting a new job it can be quite a big stress. So the patient will tell you that, you know, uh, I started this new job and I have this type of headache that is just getting worse and worse. So throbbing type of headache. Now, please do not confuse tension headache with migraine just because the patient tell you that I have stress. Because what a lot of people do is when they hear the word stress and they hear the word headache, they, they like directly jump to tension headache. But tension headache has different characteristics than migraine. So if a patient is telling you all the characteristics of migraine, that I have this headache on the one side of my head and it's throbbing type of headache, there are these clear cut triggers. And uh, one thing that the patient, patient with migraine might tell you is they will tell you, I can feel the headache coming, okay? Or you can ask the patient, can you feel can you feel it coming? And he will say, yes, you know, I can feel it coming, which is called as aura. So this patient with migraine, they know, they know that now the headache is about to start, okay? Which is a thing that is uh, a very, very peculiar, very particular about migraine, okay? It doesn't happen with any other type of headache. So all the pointers, when they point to our migraine, uh, so do not diagnose tension headache only based on stress, okay? And tension headache, as the name also suggests, it's because of stress. So the patient is either under a lot of stress because of multiple factors. And the uh, sight, uh, sight is usually, they say that it's a bane-like headache. 
pa like a paint encircling their head and it's tightening and squeezing in nature. And they might say that uh, they also see some uh, stiffness in their neck muscles, which is different from neck stiffness, which is there in subarachnoid hemorrhage and meningitis. Because, you know, the muscles of our neck in stress, they go into a type of a state of spasm which causes um, neck pain as well, okay? So don't diagnose, you know, subarachnoid hemorrhage and tension headache just because the patient is also having neck pain, okay? Because tension headache is not that much severe. It may be like six, uh, six or seven on a scale of one to 10. And um, it's it will be there for, you know, two days or three days. And they will tell you that uh, paracetamol makes it better. Then cluster headache, cluster headache, um, cluster headache is usually in males. It's not quite common um, with regards to the exam, but it's good to rule it out. So cluster headache is mostly in males. It is on one side of the head. And um, so in these patients, they also have some eye pain as well. And then it's redness of the eye. There is a rhinuria, which is discharge, uh, like runny nose, runny eyes, okay? So a little bit flu-like condition. So that's cluster headache. And then carbon monoxide poisoning. Carbon monoxide poisoning, it can happen in a way that a patient comes to you and tells you that I've been having this headache. And one specific thing that he will tell you when you ask about, is there anything that makes it better? He will say that, yes, whenever I, I go outside home, um, whenever I'm outside, the headache is better. But whenever I return to my home, the headache is worse. So you know that this is carbon monoxide poisoning. There is a problem. There might be some problem with the patient's heating system or the boiler, which is chronically releasing carbon monoxide in the house because the house is in, because it's, the environment is quite cold in the UK and houses have inbuilt heating system and boilers, which can sometimes uh, malfunction and cause carbon monoxide poisoning. So for carbon monoxide poisoning, a big clue is the patient is better outside, but worsen inside the home. And uh, in this question, you can also ask an additional question that is there anyone else in the house that is suffering from the same symptoms? And the patient will tell you yes. Okay. So this was all about uh, differential diagnosis. I hope it's clear to you guys. Now, there are red flags that you need to ask about in every um, case of headache, whether it is acute or chronic. Because red flags are something that you should always, always and always rule out. Because if you miss these red flags, then it will show that you are not uh, a safe doctor. Because these red flag questions are about life-threatening conditions. So you need to ask the patient, would you describe this headache as the worst headache of your life to rule out subarachnoid night hemorrhage? You should ask about fever, neck stiffness, and rage to rule out meningitis. Because meningitis is again a life-threatening condition. You must ask about trauma because head trauma is also a life-threatening condition. And we know that there is um, in, in uh, epidural, what do we call it? In epidural hemorrhage or epidural hematoma because of head trauma, there is this lucid interval in which the patient is only complaining of headache. Otherwise, he is normal. And then if you let him go during that time period, then he will present with unconsciousness and coma, okay? And vision changes, you should also uh, always ask about vision changes uh, because number one, giant cell arthritis. So giant, if giant cell patient with giant cell arthritis have uh, vision changes, then it's an emergency, okay? And uh, other thing about vision changes is it's good to ask about vision changes because glaucoma, the acute angle closure glaucoma can also present with um, a vision changes, which is again an emergency. So in acute angle closure glaucoma, there is a lot of headache and vision changes. So the patient, instead of going to the ophthalmologist, ends up in accident and emergency department. Okay. So um, whenever a patient with headache presents to you, um, you always start with, uh, like, um, obviously you will always start with introducing yourself and asking them, uh, how may I help you? And when they say, doctor, I have headache, you need to express some sympathy, tell them that you are sorry to hear about that. Always ask them, do you have any, um, do you have headache um, at this time? And are you comfortable enough to talk? Okay, and then you will proceed, then you will ask them an open-ended question about the headache, ask them, 
can you please tell me a bit more about it then do socrates okay rule out differential diagnosis and rule out all the red flags then regarding past history ask them has this ever happened before so in case of chronic headaches they will tell you yes this has been happening for the last two to three months or two to three years okay also ask them have you ever been diagnosed with high blood pressure and kidney problems because both of them are related to headaches then regarding p3 ask them about meftosa which is are you on any medication m stands for medication are you on any regular medications including over the counters now this is also a medication is also particularly important in headache because there is one thing called as uh, medication overuse headache okay so some patients who are using uh, painkillers like paracetamol regularly they have this headache because of medication overuse okay so for those type of patients the only treatment is to tell them to ever abruptly stop all the uh, painkiller medications all right and then um, allergies uh, ask them about allergies family history do you have any family history of similar type of headaches and what do you do for a living and how is it affecting your daily life or daily activities okay so psychosocial part uh, now the psychosocial part never never um never take it for granted okay the psychosocial part is very very important in all the prep two stations okay so always ask them what do you do for a living how is it affecting your life how is this condition affecting your life and they will always tell you something that oh my life is affected in this way and that they might have some concern which you will need to address. So, as Dr. Aman Arora says that um, you should always like um, you should always complete a triangle. Like there are three things: a triangle, which you always need to complete in the two station. The first one is red flags. So you should also you should always ask about red flags. The second one is um, psychosocial. So never ever forget about uh, asking about the psychosocial of the patient. And um, the third part of the triangle is ideas, concerns, and expectations of the patient. So you should also always complete this um, triangle in every station. Always ask yourself whether I have completed this triangle during history taking, okay? So, um, you, you cannot miss any of the part of this triangle because if you miss any of the part, then even the, if the rest of your station is perfect, uh, you will still score very low. Okay. So, Kefedex, which is basically a lifestyle question about smoking, alcohol, uh, diet, exercise. You can ask these if the patient is presenting with chronic headache. In more acute headache like subject night hemorrhage, there is no need to ask about diet and exercise. You know, uh, just ask about family. His, uh, fam, sorry, family history is a part of meptosa. Just um, don't ask anything about cephalitis and acute headache. Okay, all right. Then examination. Examination in case of headache is observation, neurological examination, and fundoscopy. So you'll tell the patient, "I'm going to um, examine you now. If that's okay with you, I'll check your observation, and I will do. Uh, I will examine your nerves." And I will look at the back of your eye with an instrument if that's okay with you, okay? So the, these three are uh, examination. Are the things to examine in headache stations, that is uh, general physical examination, neurological examination, fundoscopy. Of course, you are not going to like go and examine the patient because that's not a patient, that's a simulator. But the examiner will give you a paper on which the examination findings will be written. But only if you verbalize these uh, exam, otherwise they will not give you, okay? So don't just generally say that I will now examine. You need to be specific in mentioning the part that you are going to examine. So that was about the differential diagnosis of headache and structure of headache station in journal. Uh, I'm going to discuss the management of each type of headache uh, in a separate video because headache you know, is quite a long station.